about if we get started? So first of all, again, I'd like to bring your attention to MultiCare Good Samaritan Hospital, a fantastic partner. They're a great partner for healing and a healthy future. MultiCare Good Samaritan Hospital is your trusted regional healthcare partner with an overriding theme of we care about people. Throughout COVID-19, prior to the pandemic, and after this critical time, MultiCare pursues excellent outcomes all the while respecting each individual. They believe healthcare can be so much better, and putting people first is how they earn the right to be your healthcare champion. Monica Ricarte Herley represents MultiCare today. She's the executive director of Good Samaritan Foundation. She knows the value of local treatment strengthened by regional outcomes through personal experience and connections with hundreds of friends and family members who have trusted MultiCare. She brings greetings from her colleagues and represents Good Samaritan President and Chamber Board member Jim Beatty, who is moving his family across the country to the Pacific Northwest this week. Monica is a Rotarian, downhill skier, world traveler, often signing up for cooking classes and wine explorations as she's traveling throughout her travels. Mom of one college sophomore and a high school junior, Monica is excited to be here with Damon Heward and was among the very first wave of people to taste passing time wines. She worked nine years in a bakery where she grew up near Lake Chelan, adding to the reason she deeply admires and indulges in Odette's creations. We'll hear from Odette later at Celebrity Cake Studio. As regularly as she can, get her workout out at the YMCA to balance her indulgences. So without further ado, the lovely Monica Ricarte Hurley. Thanks, Tara. It's great to be here. It's always fun to have an intro like that when you have a chance to be around amazing people. And um, Multicare is truly proud to partner with the Chamber on this event and on many different endeavors here in our city. We're grateful for each one of you doing your part in trying to stay home, stay clean, stay safe, use your masks. Damon has a really cool one. Yeah, I got a cool one passing time mask so um, please use those we are distancing here six feet apart so that we're nice and safe and we are so grateful that you're participating today from the safety of your home and also doing something really fun with your family and friends so it is my absolute great pleasure to introduce someone who i've come to not only admire as an in integral human being, integral to the part of the healthy part of lifestyle, um, Damon Heward. Damon works for the University of Washington as the external relations coordinator for the athletic department, meaning that he's out visiting with people as distanced and careful as he can, but also promoting those uh, Husky athletics. Damon himself is a Husky, but before that, he came out of the great Puyallup Valley. So he went to high school, middle school, and elementary school here, and even learned about Sloppy Joes in elementary school, which is really different than what we're going to experience today. <laughs> right, Tyler? Sloppy Joes, Sloppy Joes, Sloppy Joes. So we're going to that later, but in the meantime, um, I want to tell you that Damon now is co-owner of Passing Time Winery, and I am indeed a big fan of Passing Time. I love the name, I love the wine, I love the mission that they have, and the carefulness with which they create their um, vineyard and all the wines that they make too. So it's great pleasure to introduce Damon. Um, he's here today. His wife and three children are watching diligently, I'm sure. Julie is a great supporter of Damon as well, and um, three kids in high school and uh, college age. So they've got all the challenges that we're all having too. But thanks for coming back to Puyallup, Damon. Thank great you. to see you. Thank you, Tara. Appreciate um, it. It's always great to come back to my hometown, Puyallup, the 253. Uh, my parents still live just a couple blocks west of the fairgrounds, 912 9th Street. I know they're watching today. <laughs> Grandpa Mike, Grandma Kay, thank you. Uh, yeah, I always love coming back here and uh, support the Culinary Classic and the Puyallup Sumner Chamber. Uh, that's why we're here today to support the local businesses here in Puyallup. So go Vikings. Woohoo! <laughs> awesome. Well, let's go ahead and get started. We will be starting off the first part of our show um, with a craft cocktail uh, demonstration from Mikey, the famous Mikey out at Bourbon Street. So a little bit about Mikey. He's born in New Orleans, raised in Sri Lanka. His lust for hospitality came through bartending and cooking, not only at the restaurant, but hosting private parties and dinners. Mikey has spent quite a bit of time in Oregon wine country learning all about viticulture. An avid lover of art and music, Bourbon Street is a great reflection of all of that. 
Some of his favorite countries and cultures that influence him are Portugal, Mexico, France, and Cuba. We are so happy to have the crafty and creative mixologist from Bourbon Street, Mikey de Alves. Did you say that, right? You did say that, right? <laughs> thank well, you. Thank you, everybody, the production team, Chamber, all the sponsors, Damon. Uh, for being here and putting on this uh, incredible Zoom event. Um, and really excited to be here and represent the restaurant uh, and make some delicious cocktails for you guys. Perfect. So uh, without further ado, uh, <laughs> let's get into it. Um, <clears throat> so we're gonna start out with uh, one drink uh, called the Persephone. Um, as we're going into fall, I wanna showcase some of the drinks that we're uh, going to be featuring on our new fall menu at the restaurant, uh, working alongside my uh, other bartender, Brendan, who is quite festive. So he's, we've, we've, we've put a lot of, lot of thought and energy into, into these drinks. And, uh, and we want to, uh, you know, want to bring these to, to, uh, to the table and, uh, let's get going. Uh, so, this guy is going to be uh, a coconut vodka that uh, that we do in house, um, which is just cream of coconut and vodka, and we batch it together just because when we're behind the bar, uh, it makes things a lot easier uh, to 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 build a drink. So we're going to do an ounce and a half of this. Did Tom Cruise teach you that in the movie Cocktail, Coconut and the Vodka? No, actually, this was something that, remember, I when I was your personal bartender, when yes. you were in the NFL, yes. you know, and I was, it was yes. that one drink, yeah. you know, yeah. when you just had that rough, <laughs> that rough time. It took the edge one. off exactly. of that game. I got hit 10 times. It's one times. thing that y'all may not know, that I was Damon's personal bartender. Oh, nice. Was, uh, well, I feel like the name should first. have something about the the keyword well, Damon you know, we were actually We were actually into uh, uh, Greek mythology at the time. I would read in philosophy, oh. Greek philosophy. And wow. Mythology. So Persephone is, is where that comes from. You so learn something new every day. <laughs> so now we're going to do, um, we're going to add some lemon juice to this. So we're going to mm -hmm. go uh, just a three quarter of an ounce. So this is called a jigger. So it helps you kind of measure everything mm -hmm. out. Uh, then we're going to add a little bit of creme de cacao that's been infused mm -hmm. with vanilla. And these guys are out of California. Uh, Tempest Fugit, fantastic. Uh, uh distillery very quality stuff so we're going to do a quarter ounce of this um and this is going to add really nice kind of like chocolate uh uh that vanilla caramel note to the drink mm. now we're going to bring in a little bit of uh some sherry from spain mm. uh from uh, an area called Jere, which is uh you know it's a fortified wine um uh, you know, same family of, 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 of vermouth, a little bit higher alcohol content. We like uh, that. Yeah, exactly. I know you do. I know, <laughs> I know you do. Uh, so anyways, we can, I mean, I, cherry is near and dear to my heart. It's something I do I know. Not, like on its own, but it's an incredibly versatile uh, liquid. Plays really, really well in, uh, in cocktails. So this is going to add like a nice funk to it. If you guys actually want to do a whiff. Yeah. See, I'm not, you know, I'm not even, not even, not even sharing. Man. It's like, mm. Yeah, it's great. Super, nose. super, super, super funky. Uh, <sighs> are you familiar with 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 sherry? I mean, you know, my you, wife you, cooks you, with you, sherry you, a lot. You, you being the the, the 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 wine guy in the mix. You, you know, um, I do get kind of obviously the nose. Yeah. You know, you get the kind of some licorice. Yeah. So so that yeah, you know you can kind nose. of see how that that plays yeah. well in a nice uh, sure. fall fall uh, fall cocktail. Festive. Yeah, so um, we love tiki cocktails at Bourbon Street. Um, we love playing with uh, a lot of rum. We go through rum and whiskey are our biggest things. And so one thing you don't really see on cocktail menus too often, uh, drinks with vodka. Mm -hmm. So we want to we wanna pay a little nod to our vodka friends out there. That's great. So this drink is essentially a rift on um, uh, uh, some, some tiki cocktail recipes. So I that's find why. that vodka is a little easier on my body in my old age. You know, the brown liquors uh, can be a little <laughs> tougher with in my late forties. So yeah. I, I appreciate you going with the vodka. That's not Thank what you, you said. Friend. You know, this, this four roses was brand new, and there's a little bit 
gone you see. Oh, <laughs> somebody. And it, and it wasn't me. Well, I somebody that. was late for mic check, so. <laughs> That's hmm. true. Yeah, yeah. Salute to the Rose Bowl. Oh, salute to the Rose Bowl. I like it. So uh, is this, again, just to clarify, is this your own concoction as a mixologist? This is something that, so my uh, my other bartender uh, and partner, Brendan Fisher, uh, him and I are tag teaming the program at the bar. So we, so we came up with this one together. And in general, would you say a lot of your crafted cocktails at Bourbon Street are your own creations? Yes. Awesome. Yes, yes, they are. Uh, along with the uh, the help of uh, my team, you know, we 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 work we workshop it quite a bit. Uh, what is that course, party like? Building these creations, sitting around the meeting table, just is, I mean, do you guys crawl out of there, or like like how long does it take to <laughs> come up with leave. these? Yeah. Well, and as a night chamber night. member, I mean, we could certainly offer our services to help with that. Yeah, I mean, you already do. Yes. Well, whoops, I spent <laughs> It takes a lot of great cocktails to make a good wine. <laughs> let me tell you. Well, I, I, I don't. I don't doubt that, man. I mean, or does it? Or does it take a lot of wine to make good wine? Well, it takes a cold okay. beer or two okay. as well. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, anyways, uh, Velvet Falernum. So this guy, uh, John D. Taylor. Cool thing about this is all the proceeds of this goes back to the Caribbean. Um, this is uh, 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 from. Jamaica. Uh, this is so basically a maceration of lime spices, mm. clove, cardamom, cinnamon. Uh, it's rum based, very nice, very sweet, uh, very nice uh, 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 sort of sweet component to this drink. So we're going to add a quarter ounce of that and go ahead and get that away. Wow. Um, hey, Mikey. I'm going to kind of bring in that, that Mike, with Mike. the coconut, it's going to bring in that like real tiki kind of, mm. okay. kind of vibe to it. Um, and then just to kind of kick up the spice note a little bit, we're going to add a little bit of clove bitters to it. Um, and these guys are uh, infused bitters. So and the cool thing is we actually have the, uh, the cloves in it. And just a heads up, if you, if you have trouble finding these at your local liquor store or wherever you buy a booze from, you can always come and get it from me at Bourbon Street. So what, just again, for those maybe trying to follow along a little bit, or at least to copy the recipe later, what's the ratio of the vodka to the coconuts? Um, so like I said, the vodka, we batch it with the coconut. Okay. So, so it's your own elixir. <laughs> well, no, no, no. So that's, so this is, um, this is the coconut, Coco Lopez. Okay. Uh, and so what we do is we use a, we use a liter bottle. Okay. Um, and so we'll, We'll just, you know, get a big container and add the vodka to it. At this, it's it's one can per liter. Okay. So I mean, you can do it at home. It's a fun thing to just have around okay. uh, your own coconut vodka. Um, and uh, but if you if you didn't want to batch it together, it's probably probably about a probably about a quarter ounce or or just a little bar spoon. Um, <clears throat> great. I think that question came from the chat room. So. Okay. Great. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, and that was actually something that I wanted to address in the beginning. But I'm a little starstruck, you know. I'm finding, <laughs> I know. I'm finding, I mean, my, my, finding, in my yeah, presence. In with Brock's <laughs> brother, right? Yeah. yeah. You know. So anyway, so that's the uh, that's the entire beverage. Uh, if you, yeah, go ahead and take a take mm. a take a whiff out of that. You know, you get, you get the spices. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You really get that whiff. Yeah. You can wow. get that. Yeah. Mm. Oh, come on. That's bring good, in, bring in some of that. Bring in some of that wine. <laughs> that that cream de coco. <laughs> A little yeah. Barbados cinnamon. Exactly. So it's taking you on a journey. You know, you're mm, going to the you're clothes going to are just shining. You're going to Spain. You're going to. Uh, this, is, this is a world traveler, man. Yeah, exactly. You know. Oh uh, man. So the vodka that we use, you can use any vodka. Mm. We use a Polish vodka called vodka, actually. Is it a potato <laughs> vodka? It's it's from grain. From, from grain. grain. Okay. It's from grain. Uh, so any any decent vodka works, uh, and yeah. That's that's pretty much it, and so we serve this up in a nice uh, martini glass. Uh, so let's let's get the shaky shaky going, in. and we're gonna get a good amount of ice in there because we want to get a good chill, good dilution. Oh oh oh! Move back for this one. This is my workout. I like it. <laughs> And it's also kind of awkward, like at the bar, like when everybody's just looking at you. <laughs> it's like, oh, hey, 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 hey. We'll shake it for about 15 seconds. Get, make sure you're getting 
getting a good amount of aeration. And That's stuff. Russell Wilson's okay. warm up too. Yeah. yeah. Right, <laughs> the football up down, just These the are pocket. things that we worked on, Dan. Yeah. You like, can't remember your training. Yeah. You, know? <laughs> you know that arm that you had. Oh right? yeah, glory oh, days. Sometimes you got to throw me a little bit of credit. That's it. Yeah. Just don't right. throw me on football because I won't catch it. <laughs> <laughs> so get a good amount of aeration in there, shake it out. Okay. You want to get that chill on mm -hmm. the outside of your chin. Okay. And then we have a little fine mesh strainer right here because okay. we want to get all that uh, all the ice shards out of there. Um, so if you can't do what I'm about to do, there's another type of strainer which I actually didn't bring called a Hawthorne strainer, which just goes on here. And you, for it, I'm sure you guys might mm -hmm. see that. Okay. Um, so we're gonna strain that into our gut. Give a little jiggle over here. Really out quick. Try making like 20 of these. I was going to say on a busy Friday night yeah. and the artiste must perform. That's and right. look at you. Right. I mean, I do have a little bottle of bourbon to help me out if I do get into <laughs> a situation. Uh, now we're going to just to kind of cherry on top, bring in a little bit more of that fall uh, festive. Vibe. Mm. We're gonna grate a little bit of fresh nutmeg mm. on it, and and if you guys did want to kick it up a notch, you can you can do some some grated lime or grated lemon, you know, what any 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 citrus skin, uh, you know, a little bit of little bit of fresh mint. Mm. So you know, have 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 fun with it. You know, really. I mean, there's no there's 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 no strict parameters. So this is the uh, this is the Persephone. Uh, I don't know what the regulations are with, with like, you guys tasting, <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I don't mind, but maybe, you know, straws or whatever. Are we drinking? I'm going to, I'm going to, can we, can we drink it? I think, I think Tara, somebody she can. Might, she might finish the whole thing. I know. <laughs> Tara, you deserve it. You've worked so oh, hard to make okay. us stay happy. Just a quick little sip. Just I will certainly, thing. gosh. Can we get some? Yeah. We tough job, it? really tough yeah. job. So, all right, here we go. Bottoms up. <laughs> Beautiful. Oh my gosh, so that's that, art. That tastes good. That was fantastic. It's it's it's, it's <laughs> great. Amazing. It's fantastic, yeah. definitely. Are you are you are you good? Um, this is not communion. If it wasn't a good <laughs> art, I I I drink all of it. But I get to drink Smart on the job cup. every day with the wine. <laughs> you know, all right. It's all good. So was there another cocktail yes, we're going absolutely. to do? All right, let's so move on to that do. one. I get the next one. Uh, okay, you get that. That's a, probably okay, a fair way to yeah, do. Yeah, great. It's, and it's guess what? It's got brown liquor in it. Oh, man. great. Yeah. Oh. Great. I'm so on. I'm I know on. we're on a time crunch. Uh, so we're gonna do um, again with the fall fall uh, in the mix. We're gonna make a, a an old fashioned, um, and we're gonna we're gonna uh, it's it's called a pumpkachino old fashioned. So we're gonna use a, a little pumpkin syrup that we've made with dehydrated pumpkin powder. That you can get on Amazon actually, and Demerara sugar, uh, which is this beautiful, rich brown sugar almost. So that's this guy right here. Okay. Um, and then we're going to add a little bit of coffee liqueur. Mm -hmm. uh, these guys are out of Portland, New Deal. Okay. Uh, and it's cold brew as well. Oh. So pumpkin syrup, cold brew, coffee liqueur, whiskey, I mean. Let's go. <laughs> Can't go to Starbucks for that, you know. <laughs> uh, so we're going to start out with some bitters. Uh, just a quick sort of uh, a, 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 little, uh, a little thing that you can do if you don't want to mess up your drink and toss the booze. I'll just start out with the cheapest ingredients first. That's what we do behind the bar. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because if you mess up, you don't want to toss your whiskey out, right? Uh, so we're going to do five dashes of Angostura bitters. You can get this almost anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, Where's my headphone? And uh, <clears throat> this is, you know, the classic, uh, the classic old fashioned calls from whiskey, bourbon, bitters, sugar, uh, and, and, and that's it. So Four Roses uh, bourbon is what we're going to be using. Incredible value. Uh, I think you can get that at the shop for like, $16, I want to say. Uh, so we'll start up with uh, some pumpkin syrup. We'll do... How did you make this pumpkin syrup? So demerara sugar, right? Yeah. Hot water, two parts 
two part sugar to one part water. Okay. So it's also called a rich, uh, rich simple syrup. Uh, and then we did, uh, so if we're going by volume, what I did was a liter of sugar to a uh, half liter of hot water, and then a tablespoon of pumpkin powder. The pumpkin powder is quite strong. Uh, so you're gonna get this, you're, you're, you're gonna extrapolate a lot, of, a lot of pumpkin flavor out of it and also still have that richness and caramel uh, flavor of the, uh, of the uh, Demerara. So we're gonna do two bar spoons of that, which equals out to roughly, roughly a quarter ounce. Um, and then we're gonna add our coffee liqueur. Is there any caffeine in coffee liqueur? I've always wondered. This is actually decaffeinated coffee liqueur. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. I, that's a great <laughs> question, but maybe we should uh, we should take a trip down to Portland and go yeah. and see. You know, I love that you're using local products Absolutely. in the Northwest. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, uh, and and you know what? If you don't if you don't have this, you can use uh, Kahlua or yeah. another coffee liqueur. But I'm a big fan because it's not that sweet, and like you know, when you smell it, you kind of imagine walking into a coffee shop. There it is. Yeah. It's, it doesn't. It's not coffee. as. It's not as oh, sweet yes. as a lot of other coffee liqueurs. Right. That's right. Um, so did we add that already? I forgot. You did. Oh boy, okay, I so believe it's in there. You did. The whiskey is kicking in. Um, <laughs> so we're gonna do two ounces of uh, Four Roses bourbon, and that's the classic portion of um, of whiskey to add to an old fashioned. It's two ounces. Um, and that's it. That's, that's it. And look what I bought with me. A fancy big ice cube. Oh, I love it. Presentation it matters. And it is alcohol, so it'll kill off whatever's in there. Um, Kills COVID. It'll kill COVID. Good. I think. Uh, we're going to give it a little, a little stir, stir. And then we'll garnish with a twist of orange. Make sure you express all of those orange oils on the get those orange little tips and tricks green. there. Yeah, make it look pretty. I actually shaved it out before I came here. Yeah, so beautiful. Yeah. Little tra trapezio. You forgot to shave the beard though. What's wrong with my beard? No, it looks good. Yeah. Looks good. Come it's on. Good man. It's always giving me smack. Uh, and also we have these delicious uh, marasca cherries uh, that we serve at the restaurant with all our old fashioned. Wow. 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 You I love it. Mike. Wow. Man. I That's love it. Cappuccino old fashioned. Cheers, man. Thank you. Wow. Cheers. That's fantastic. All of you all to just, you know, if you can't make it at home, come see me for it. You might run into Damon. Man. <laughs> well, and that is so good. Wow. Looks fantastic. Wow. I'm happy with mine. I, I hope you're happy with yours. Well, I'll drink Cheers. The then. And you can yes. do, yes, you drink yeah. the mocktail. <laughs> well, there's nothing in here. So you can't choose with an empty glass. We are, um, we're going to, uh, I'm going to chat with you a little bit about your restaurant as Absolutely. we get ready for the next segments. And um, so, hey, I hope you enjoyed and picked up some great tips and trips. Uh, tip, tips and trips. <laughs> Wasn't that a fun trip tricky. down Bourbon Lane? <laughs> um, so again, uh, Mikey, thank you so much. I, I'm going to actually ask the viewers to come on in for a little intimate conversation with you. Welcome. You're, welcome, welcome, you're welcome. a very colorful and charismatic character, I would say. Um, definitely no, part of the <laughs> definitely part of the fabric at Bourbon Street, and we would just like to learn a little bit more about what um, the restaurant offers. So we know the crafted cocktails have definitely helped to put you on the map. But what what can you tell me about some of the recipes and menu items? So we focus on uh, classic Cajun Creole cuisine. Uh, my father, my parents spent quite a bit of time in Louisiana, uh, so that's where the uh, the inspiration comes from. Uh, so yeah, I mean, just good old soul Creole cooking, and especially at a time like this, you know, a bowl of gumbo and etouffee, I mean, will really set you straight, uh, wash that down with a delicious cocktail, you know, <laughs> so yeah, we've been open now for, um, seven, we're going on seven years this December, just, uh, uh, December 2013 is when we opened. Okay. So. Well, congratulations for that. That's a feat in itself. Yeah. I know it must be challenging the last six months. 
I think that your family is, um, is certainly made some heroic measures with a lot of what you did do um, well, to support the community. And yeah, so we appreciate it's, it's, that. It's all thanks to the community. You know, our philosophy is it's easier to decay than it is to grow. We work yeah. very hard at what we do. And we, uh, you know, we, we really owe it to uh, everybody in Puyallup and actually in other counties as well that have come to, come to see us. Uh, yeah. So, you know, when, when, when the shutdown happened, uh, we were quite unsure as to what direction the restaurant was going to go, mm -hmm. but we knew we had to, we had to uh, stay afloat and, and, and win and, uh, you know, do what we can for, for, uh, for the, not, not only the restaurant, but for our team and, yep. uh, you know, so, so once that happened, I mean, the, 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 everybody came knocking on the door and like, keep feeding us. I love it. And you've created some really great outdoor space with the parklet outside as well, which is wonderful. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. hey, I, um, I love Bourbon Street. I love their jambalaya. We had their uh, crab stuffed mushrooms the other night with the hush puppies, which are so fantastic. So come see Mikey out at Bourbon Street. It's just, it'll be a real treat for you. So thank you again. Cheers, Cheers to you, my friend. Salute. Salute. Yeah. All right. We are going to move on over now to our cooking segment, I believe. Take it over, Damon. Yes, well, I'm here with Chef Brian. It is now time for our cooking segment after a couple cocktails. I'm hungry. And uh, Chef Brian has some great food to tell us uh, about here today. So get out your meal kits and let's go. All right, first a little bit about Brian. He grew up in the small town of Yelm and during high school took a job as a dishwasher for a local restaurant, Arnold's Country Inn. Little did he know the opportunities this job would provide him. Um, he was working with his chef owner, Arnold Ball, who was an accomplished chef. And just by being in his kitchen, Brian learned the core principles and work ethic required for a successful chef. He rose through the ranks in the kitchen, learning recipes and procedures to build the foundation of his chef career. He worked there for six years, had a brief stint at Anthony's home port in Olympia, and then accepted a job at Olympia Golf and Country Club as the sous chef Six years later, he was hired as the executive chef for Oscar's restaurant in Tacoma, Washington. He spent seven years in that position and was introduced to the owner of Crockett's restaurant group, Sean Broback. He applied for the executive chef position for this restaurant and Crockett's public house he was hired on. Here we are eight years later and five total restaurants and three different concepts. And he has successfully led the kitchen from an administrative standpoint until now. Along the way, they were selected to appear on the Food Network show, Diners, Drive-Ins and Dives. And he was fortunate enough to represent the restaurants on national TV. They have successfully built the brand and their customer base ever since. They're a real gem in Puyallup. I'm so happy to welcome Brian, Chef Brian. Thank you, I appreciate it. You bet. This is a serious blast from the past here in that uh, <laughs> the history of how I got here. Um, <clears throat> so we've got our meal kits out today. There's a couple things that you want to do ahead of time. Um, you want to preheat your oven to 400 degrees. The artichoke should go in. Um, in your kit, your artichoke is already prepared. It's already grilled, seasoned. It's ready to go. You just have to heat it up. So put it in the oven um, if you can now, um, and then it can heat up while we're doing the rest. Um, so for the other choke, it's served with a Calabrian pepper aioli. Um, very, very simple, and it's kind of the key to the dish. Um, the artichoke, very, very simple. I've got a whole artichoke here. Um, you've seen these prickly things. Um, a little bit of cleanup on them. We just uh, shave off the outside of the stem. It's really fibrous, and you want to kind of get down to the tender meat. And then on the, you cut it in half. The inside is a thistle, actually, and it's really prickly. You don't want to scoop that out and leave as much of the leaves as you can because um, the leaves on the end of them, that's that's the part you want to eat. Yes. Um, so for the aioli, simple. Dijon mustard, lemon juice, mayonnaise, and Calabrian peppers. I have a couple of the peppers here. They're really small. They're from uh, Calabria in Italy. Um, they're imported. Very important. It's kind of the key to the sauce. So when you're assembling the aioli, the key is blending the pepper, lemon juice, and the Dijon all together. And you really want to puree the pepper all the way so you get an even, they're spicy, you get even heat throughout, you get even color. Really a simple, simple sauce. So what I have is the Dijon mustard, the lemon juice, and the pepper already pureed, and the mayonnaise. So this is really simple. We're talking one step, 
put it together and mix it up. Very, very easy. Now, if you leave chunks in your aioli um, of the peppers, you're gonna get spots of heat. Um, and if you like spicy things, great. Um, if you're looking for a little more mild sauce, you wanna make sure that it's pureed very thoroughly and then mix thoroughly and you get kind of a mild background flavor. Um, on that note, the Sloppy Joe, there's a couple things that you're gonna need. We're gonna demonstrate that here in just a second. You need a saucepan, preferably thick bottom, um, cause it's got a lot of tomato product in it. Brown sugar tends to burn. So it's gonna be low heat saucepan. You need a wire whisk. Um, and the Sloppy Joe tends to thicken up when you cool it. So you might wanna add just a little touch of water to it, maybe a half a cup. Um, and as you're heating it up, it will cook out. So at that point, we go into yeah. the kitchen. Yeah, let's go to the kitchen. kitchen. That's what we're doing here. Yeah. Okay. All right. Got it all set up back here. Yeah, we've got everything laid out. Um, I've got the pan hot already. Nice. It's a very simple recipe, lots of ingredients. A um, little intimidating when you look at it, but it's really, it's really an easy recipe. So I'm starting with canola oil in a hot pan. Um, and then we've got um, diced red onion and diced red pepper. Those are gonna go in the pan immediately. And those are gonna cook until they're starting to soften up. They're a little bit translucent. Um, <clears throat> just trying to bring the flavor out of the, of the mm. pepper. Um, it kind of reacts with the fat and the heat and it, and it starts to develop flavor. And what this sauce is all about is just developing flavor. Um, the cook time with all the herbs and um, spices and vinegar and stuff that we're putting in, it's all about how long you cook it, everything blends together. So I'll turn the heat up on this. Here it's sizzling in the pan, it's kind of cooking. It takes a little bit to soften up. Um, the next ingredients we have, um, and we like to use a 90-10 sirloin, which is 90% lean, 10% fat. Big deal on the fat. Um, you don't want to have a bunch of fat because um, what it, what happens is it rises to the top and your sloppy joe ends up being real greasy. You don't want that. Mm -hmm. So use some lean ground beef and then we have fresh ground pork. We just buy a pork butt, grind it up. Mm -hmm. um, so those two. You get a little fat in the pork though, right? Give you a little flavor. Yeah, so it's very little canola oil and you can see that on your recipe. Um, you're starting out with very little fat, but, but the pork and the beef and the yeah, bring in, bring in the rest of it. So as your onions and your peppers soften up, you add the, add the meat and you're just gonna wanna brown it. And it happens relatively quickly. You, your heat can be high, you're just taking care not to, not to burn your peppers and onions. You don't want that right. flavor in there. I'm not sure at Avon Junior High in seventh grade, the Sloppy Joes that we had on the menu had both the combination of pork and beef. What, what do you think that was made up of? That's a good question. Honestly, I don't want to speculate on it. That was made up of. At this point, we call it Mom Sloppy Joe, but it's definitely not your Mom Sloppy Joe. We're putting jalapenos, we're putting cayenne pepper. These are things that you're not going to find in your man which that you man that's right i haven't heard that one forever you know so this is something it's a it's a step up from your average sloppy joe um you know a little bit of heat but it's really a savory kind of sweet dish so as our meat browns we're gonna add the uh, liquid and what i have i've combined the worcestershire red wine vinegar and red wine um, you're gonna deglaze the pan. So as your meat's cooking, you're getting a, a nice crust on the bottom of the pan. Yeah. Um, and that's where your flavor really develops from. Mm -hmm. So if you're getting the crust, you know that you're getting some flavor. Um, and then when you pour the liquid in, it brings the crust up off the bottom of the pan. Okay. Now that flavor goes throughout the sauce. And Cause I know sometimes when I cook with these kind of pans at home, everything sticks to the bottom, right? Like, Which is a good thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're telling me this guy right here, the, the, the Worcester sauce and the vinegar's gotta get that crust off. Yep. 
Gotcha. Exactly. Oh, so, learn something new every day. They call it deglazing. Deglaze. Um, and it's really just bringing, so you develop flavor as the meat and the, and yeah. the vegetables brown on the bottom and it sticks. So you actually uh, want that. You do want that. Oh, cool. Take it to the point. You don't want it to get dark. Yeah, starts yeah. to get that bitter flavor. Sure. So now we've got our liquid in. You want to kind of reduce a little bit. Um, so and I'm running through this relatively quickly. But the tomato product, um, which is tomato paste and tomato sauce, um, predisposed to burning. So at this point, once you get that in there, you're going to want to turn your heat down. Um, because we're going to turn it into kind of a simmer. And your total cook time should be about 45 minutes to an hour. Uh, I've scaled the batch size down significantly. Um, so normally we're making five to 10 gallons at a time. Yeah. You know, now we're gonna make five cups. Sure. So big, big difference. Um, we've got jalapenos and garlic. Um, the garlic I hold back just to make sure that it doesn't burn. Garlic's a lot of sugar content, wants to burn when it hits high heat. Yeah. Um, so we add that in after the liquid maybe mix. It all starts to come together. And then last, our spice, spice blend, um, brown sugar. Reason why it goes in last, it wants to burn. Uh, we're dry mustard, paprika, cayenne pepper, um, and cumin, kosher salt, black pepper. Gotcha. Real simple. Sounds like a lot of ingredients. It's really, really simple. Um, and at that point, you've got everything in the pan. What you're gonna to wanna to do is just make sure your heat's down on low, um, and then it's gonna cook for 45 minutes to an hour. Um, you so, wanna, so good. You smell the, oh, the vinegar and everything starting to combine. You have the spices, um, mm. you know, and when that really blends together, the, the finished product is unbelievable. Yeah. So at this point, yeah. We get to go taste it? Yes, of course. We are. I think there was a few questions. Um, I, I want to say a question about the artichokes and how long in the oven, potentially. OK, so the artichokes, a um, <clears throat> little different at home with your with your home oven. Uh, in the restaurant, we're running about 350, and it probably takes us convection oven 12 to 14 minutes. Um, at home, you're probably going to want to run about 400. And then you're looking at like 30 minutes. Um, which I already had the artichoke in the oven. Okay. So we're we're ready to plate at any point. Um, one thing that you won't see at home with your meal kits, um, and we don't have here because Meridian Cafe doesn't have it, a wood fire grill with mesquite wood is the key to the artichoke. Okay. Without the mesquite, and I've tried changing the wood, you know, you try different things. The flavor is really the mesquite. I mean, artichoke is salt, water, it's boiled fully cooked, it hits the, hits the mesquite grill and it picks up the smoky flavor and really, if it's not there, you're just gonna know that something's missing, but you don't know what. So both of those recipes, can you tell us where they originated from? So the recipes for Crockett's are, they're a collaboration. Uh, it starts out with an idea um, and then everybody's involved. So, I mean, I can create a recipe, but that doesn't mean that it's going to fit. So it goes in front of Sean, the owner. Um, I put it in front of every single person as far as the dishwasher, the server. Um, I want feedback, you know, so any recipe that actually hits the menu uh, is it's vetted by sign me up for those classes. I'll you want to come be the taster? Yeah. Yes, please. When we do it, there's so much food. You'll be stuffed by <laughs> 10 a.m. Put us on the list. <laughs> um, but these two items were also on diners, drivers and dives. Um, so we've done this before and they're tried and true and we love them, so. Um, Great. Yeah, gosh, these smells, the aromas. I mean, have you been on Iron Chef? I mean, when can we get you on the <laughs> yeah. Tell us a little bit about your experience at Diners, Drive-Ins and Dives. How did, yeah, that, how did that, that play out? That was a- And was it as professional as this production here today? <laughs> it was a massive production. Um, great experience. Pretty nerve wracking, national TV. Um, Guy Fieri is a huge personality, very, very funny, very loves to joke around. I mean, we had a we had a blast, but it was three days worth of filming for like 15 minutes on air. Um, but all in all, it was a great experience, and we've just seen um, positive feedback ever since. It's been how many years ago was that? 
I think we're looking at eight years. Um, 2012, as we filmed in November, uh, the show aired in February. And then keep airing those shows. It's not late at night. I'm watching them. Yeah, <laughs> I frequently get texts. I just yeah. saw you on TV. I'm like, when I was like eight years younger. <laughs> Do you have mailbox money from all those appearances? Like every time. Do not. Uh, no, that's <laughs> sign your life away. What's up? Because I bet he is. <laughs> I bet he is. And so these two menu items sounds like they have stood uh, withstood the test of time. Absolutely. Yeah. Still on the menu and still a favorite. Probably one of the hardest things for us is at Crockett's is deciding what to take off the menu because mm -hmm. that, you're going to disappoint somebody. Yeah. Um, and that's the main thing. I mean, the process that we go through as far as recipe uh, selection, um, we know the recipe is good. You get people get it in their hearts. They sure. love it. That's what they're coming for. And then. We take it off the menu and they are not very happy. Yeah. You know, How so often do you change up the menu? We try a couple times a year, yeah. um, seasonal, summertime, wintertime. Um, but we're fortunate in that sense where the menu items, people love them. They keep coming back for them. So sure. we try to keep it fresh, bring new ideas, bring new stuff. Um, what is the signature, give me three? entrees on the on the net like maybe that's impossible because they're all great they're all your creation and that's it uh, that's three of, give me give me give me two of them. toughest question ever um for me and you know it's one of the higher dollar items the ribeye steak is going to be something that you just can't find those flavor profiles anywhere served with an au jus that's just it's sweet it's you know normally your au jus is really salty um and thin ours is a little bit thicker and it's sweet yeah. barbecue sauce and red wine in it and um and the spice blend on the steak is spicy and it's just something that you don't find um and then for me i'm a chef it's real bad we do i'm yeah. a mesquite I'm so mesquite. you're getting the same thing okay yep Great. for me i'm the chef you know we eat on the fly so the tacos are really good to eat down in the corner you know <laughs> when, you, when you're just trying to get some food in you and the tacos you've got shrimp you've got um the cod or the braised chicken, um, you can't go wrong with them. I mean, they're just delicious. Okay, back to that ribeye, my mouth's watering. What temperature do you prefer to cook a ribeye or serve a ribeye at? I prefer rare, rare. Um, nuts for me, but if it's high enough in meat, I don't even need to cook it, I'll eat it raw. Yeah. Um, it all depends about the quality of meat, and we're, we're really sourcing uh, as high quality as we can, mm -hmm. as far as price point goes top two-thirds choice it's washington grown um grain fed it's it's really higher end higher end meat than you find in a lot of places do it with the mesquite the mesquite is a key for a lot of things um we have that grill fired up in there when you go in there it smells like a campfire a little bit um, yeah that's the best. you know and it kind of adds to the ambiance for sure um a little bit technical you got to make sure you keep the wood on it and if you let let the fire go out well Nobody gets steaks. How, how hot do you like to get that grill before you put that steak in? Pretty close to red. Um, depends on the temperature. Six, 700 degrees? I would guess probably higher. Even higher. Um, and that's for rare. So on the rare steak, you're going to go high heat. If you like a little closer to well done, you're going to want to put it on the lower heat. That way it doesn't burn on the outside as it cooks. Yeah. Awesome. So it's, it's really a... It's a different cooking style cooking on a wood fire crockets was my first first experience with that um everywhere else it's always been gas um, but the wood fire just adds something you just can't get it without it sure you know, so all right well let's plate it up and we can continue to talk i think there are a few questions i'll try to get through as well so okay. let's come on back out is that let me grab the artichoke <laughs> I think there was a question about the spice blend. I'm not, I'm, you may have covered it, but someone is still asking a little bit about the spice blend that you use for so, the yeah. Maybe it was the sloppy joe. I guess it's, I'm trying to follow along here as well. Um, would a pellet grill work well for the artichokes? There's one question. I think it would. Uh, if you're able to get pellets that are mesquite flavored, I think you could pull it off. I don't have a lot of experience with that. We source our mesquite. I think it's coming from Texas or Mexico, somewhere um, <clears throat> southern United States. 
um, but it's very specific mesquite flavor. We've tried apple wood, we've tried almond wood, and nothing is nothing is quite the same. All right. Um, how, how long to heat up the artichokes in the kit? So artichokes in the kit, if you're 400 degrees, you're probably looking at 30 minutes. If you have a thermometer at home and you stick it into the thickest part of the artichoke, you're probably looking, you can eat those at 100 degrees, you can eat them at 140 degrees. So I recommend a little bit hotter, 120, 130, 140. Um, you know, as you're taking it apart, it's gonna take time, so it's gonna cool down. So start out hot, you know, at the end, it's lukewarm, but it won't take you long to eat it. Once you get the aioli, it's gonna be a quick, everybody better get some, it's gonna be gone. Well, this is my favorite dish. I order this for lunch um, quite frequently. So I was very excited to see that it's featured today. So do you have some for us? I do. That are finished um, here and we'll give her a taste. The artichoke just came out of the oven. Oh. And I don't know if you can see it, but you have a decent char on the outside of it from the mesquite. Um, don't be afraid, it looks kind of burnt on the outside. Really what you're eating is on the inside of the artichoke, so mm -hmm. that flavor on the outside carries over and that's really, really what you want right there. Awesome, and so we do a little lemon? Little squeeze. lemon if you like it, yeah. squeeze it on there. The aioli is really, I like it spicier, so if I was gonna make this myself, I'd probably double the peppers in the recipe. Okay. Um, and then you just get that kick. Um, but the balance is, is really good the way it is. Mm, my favorite, again. And there's no easy way to eat it. I just slurp it up and <laughs> this is so good. Kind of like eating crab legs. It it's is. a lot of work. It's not pretty, <laughs> but it's so good. Okay, in your meal kits, we gave you a brioche bun and we gave you the onion straws that we, we actually make those in house, the onion straws. Um, we didn't provide a recipe for that, but it's as simple as, you know, you can use Funyuns, you can use onion straws from the store. Um, you can make your own if you really want to deep fry in your kitchen, which a lot of people kind of skip that. Um, I know for me, it makes a mess. I try to stay away from it, but they're made daily at, at Crockett. So it's, um, and then the finished sloppy joe. And so I got clarification. The question was, what is the spice blend for the sloppy joes? Oh, that looks fantastic. Yeah. So the spice blend for the Sloppy Joes is um, powdered mustard, paprika, cayenne, cumin, black pepper, kosher salt, and um, brown sugar. Ooh. All right. And here's the onion strings, and these really kind of make it. When they're served in the restaurant, you really get the wow factor when you pile them up really high. And you know what I love about the Sloppy Joes? Sloppy, we can be it's, sloppy, right? So, what it encourages about, sloppiness, yeah, right? You know, you can just spill all over your shirt, which I do most of the time anyway, but because it's a sloppy Joe, I can get away with it, right? Very sloppy, and honestly, the only person I've ever seen pick it up and bite it was Guy Fieri. <laughs> <laughs> and now Damon Hewitt, I get oh, to see this. Gosh, is that right? Do I get to do that? This is you. If you want to you. go for it, I mean, it's. <laughs> It's all there, it's hot, it's ready. It's Go, all down. you, man. God, that looks so good. I gotta take a bite somehow, some way. Do you there. need a you little countdown happen? spike here? Mm. <laughs> Woo! Sloppy, sloppy jokes. Okay, oh, we don't have a napkin ready for you, do we? That is much better than the Haley Junior High sloppy joe. Wow. That is awesome, Ryan. You get a little bit Fresh of the heat. Okay. A little bit of heat. So I love good. the crunch from the onions. Well uh, done with the, the toasting of the, the bun. But yeah, just all those flavors in the meat. You do get that little kick. I have so good. Um, especially if you're tired of eating too many tacos, right? The sloppy joe is like the, the next best thing. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's good, bro. Oh what God. would you recommend to drink with a sloppy joe? Ooh. Depends on how fast you're eating. I mean, if you're, <laughs> you're in a hurry, maybe some water just so you can get your next bite in. Um, Honestly, it depends on your spice level. Okay. Um, oh, for me, I get kind of lost in the sloppy joe and the textures and the flavors and oh, oh, that's so good. forget about the drink afterwards. Fantastic. And I think there was, was there also something else in the kit that was from Crockett's? I'm trying to- Oh, we did put the um, did cheesy kettle, kettle corn in there. Um, and we haven't demoed that recipe today, but the kettle corn is something, it's kind of, it's got a following. We have people come in and oh, yes. buy four, five, six boxes of it and take it to go. You can sit it on your counter at home for days. And I mean, it's just the most delicious thing. 
kind of like when you're eating a bag of Doritos and it, you pick that one out that has all the cheese on it. <laughs> Same thing with the kettle corn, the, the cheddar cheese um, that we put on it, Parmesan cheese and butter. It's it's not your average popcorn. Yeah. You know, cool. So. Yeah. Well, nothing you guys do at Crockett's is average, man. This has been an incredible treat. And oh, Appreciate that. Food. We'd love to hear from some of you at home that are cooking your meal. Just, hey, what do you think? Um, what did you like? What do you, did you already cook your artichokes? How good is the sloppy joe? Um, just, you know, pass along some feedback. We're happy to share that and certainly keep the questions coming as well. We're about to go do just a quick little behind the scenes with Brian to learn a little bit more about the restaurants um, because there's a, a bigger family than just Crockett's Public House. They've really um, made their mark here in Puyallup and Sumner. So um, keep the questions coming. We'll be sure to watch for them. But I think Brian, you and I are going to step into the kitchen for a little conversation. Let's go. Before you guys do that, Tara, some of the people were wondering, Damien, what would you recommend drinking if you were to have some of your passing time at home with the Sloppy Joe? Yeah, oh, I nice. think um, our passing time, uh, Columbia Valley Red Blend, which is still about 82% cab, uh, has some petite verdot in it, which is a very Ooh, yeah. uh, strong grape. You know, I don't like drinking it by itself, but at about 11, 12% when it's in the blend, it just adds some some really cool character profiles. Um, but I think I think the red blend with that Petit Verdot has a little Cab Franc in it and, and some Cab Sauv would just go great with this uh, hearty sloppy gel BHR combination. Damien, what bottle with that? Which one were you saying? Oh, the gray bottle right there. Oh, right here. Yeah, it's the blend. We got the red blend. blend. Oh, yeah. fantastic. So, yeah, like I said, it's, it's a blend of Cabernet, Petit Verdot, and Cab Franc. And uh, it's, uh, it's pretty killer stuff. It would go great with this sloppy gel. Wonderful. Awesome. So again, at home, um, we'd also like to hear what your favorite recipes are at Crockett's. There's, again, a, a plethora of options and just want to keep sharing with the folks that may not be familiar with Crockett's about all their great offerings. So let's go uh, take a quick little step, a little behind the scenes, and we're going to hear a little bit more from Brian as we get set up for our dessert segment. So come on in, Brian. Let's go chit chat a little bit more in here. Back to the kitchen. Back to the kitchen, the intimate kitchen here. All right, you're pretty pretty comfortable in here, I take it. I am. What's honestly. your favorite utensil? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> We're expecting that one. You know, the first chef I ever worked for said the best utensil you have is your hands. Ah. Um, Perfect. Obviously, answer. 20 years ago, you, maybe not so many gloves and stuff like that, but he literally said the best tool you have is your hands. Um, Makes sense. You know, so, Putting the love in there, you're feeling it. I got know, it. When you get into baking and pie dough and stuff like that, the feel is really. We make cinnamon rolls here at Meridian Cafe, um, and that's really hands-on stuff. Um, huge cinnamon rolls. <laughs> Wonderful. I've heard about these famous cinnamon rolls. Um, tell us a little bit more about some of the other restaurants. So we're in Meridian Cafe. I know there was a little bit of a hiccup along the way after its initial opening. Tell us kind of what's transpired since then. Definitely a hiccup, but I think blessing in disguise. So we picked up the restaurant. Um, it was Annie B's prior and Sean acquired it um, and we started operating. Uh, we operated under the Annie B's name. And then unfortunately we, we had a fire. We were doing some uh, remodel work on the building and we, we had a fire and it ended up being almost a total loss. Oh, gosh. Um, you know, but a year and a half, almost two years later, we ended up opening back up with the beautiful facility that we have now. So this kitchen like is amazing. Um, I was able to help design um, the kitchen uh, Sean did the design work on the front of the restaurant, and honestly, just the space feels amazing. And so, kind of more of a diner, cafe kind of feel. Tell diner. us about some of the recipe or some of the menu offerings. So, cafe breakfast style, it's really, really home style. You're going to find the best sausage gravy you can get, um, buttermilk biscuits. The cinnamon roll is really a key. We've got um, Bernadette who makes them, and it was her recipe. Okay. Um, she's kind of been around for a long time. She's got to be at least 65 um, but she is a gem and she makes the best cinnamon rolls um, but everything I mean we just try to do everything really well hash browns home fries um, you know farm fresh eggs all the all the breakfast stuff so if you wake up in the morning and you're hungry and you want to get cooked for Come on in. It's been a great place, a very easy uh, place to call in your breakfast, swing in curbside and grab it. Um, I do that quite frequently and I love your bacon. 
The bacon? The bacon's pretty darn good. I think uh, I'll be sitting down in the corner eating bacon at some point. <laughs> Who doesn't love bacon? So tell us about Trackside. You have some really unusual pizzas that are um, just fantastic. So Trackside was Sean's first uh, restaurant concept. Uh, I think he's probably 13 or 14 years old at this point. Okay. Um, so, and we have one location in Puyallup and one in Sumner. Um, and, and really Trackside, Puyallup, right on the tracks, your tables are gonna rumble when the train comes by. Um, but really the concept is from scratch, fresh ingredients. I mean, we're making the dough every day, we're shredding the cheese. Um, and then the pizzas, it depends on what your favorite is. The Grand Chunk being the one with all the toppings and tends to be one of the more popular mm -hmm. ones. Um, uh, you kind of want to use a fork almost because if you pick it up, everything falls off. Which, what's on your Chihuahua pizza? That's my favorite. Chihuahua, pepperoni, jalapenos, garlic, sausage, yeah. um, spicy, yeah. and just really savory, delicious. Great. So we've got a location at Trackside here in um, Puyallup and yep. also in Sumner. Yep. And then uh, most recently uh, added a second location in Maple Valley for Crockett's Public House, correct? Absolutely. So huge undertaking. Uh, we were all tired after that one. Um, so we took the Crockett's concept from Puyallup. Um, Sean built and designed the restaurant in Maple Valley. We had open, I think we're a little bit over two years at this point. Obviously COVID and everything kind of gets in the way, but I think we're doing really well up there. We've great. got a great team um, and the community's really received us really well. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure it has been such an adjustment. You employ a lot of employees. Um, yeah. Typically, I guess, pre-COVID, how many employees? Uh, I think we were close to 200 for okay. the five restaurants. Um, I think we're still very close to that. Um, we've been fortunate throughout COVID. Um, we made the adjustment and really upped our delivery and takeout business. Um, you know, we never delivered from Crockett's before, but at this point, if somebody says they want delivery, we're going to make a way. We'll find a way to make it happen. Yeah. Um, so we've we've been fortunate, and honestly, the pizza places got busier um, during the lockdown. Yeah. It's true. Uh, we saw really an increase in business, and it, it was it was really a blessing. Um, I can't complain. Yeah, and I and again, I think um, Crockett's was another, or Trackside Pizza was another great community partner. Um, the chamber did a chip in with the chamber that a lot of you folks donated to, and we were able to get pizzas out to some of our first responders. In this case, I think it was uh, East or Central Pierce Fire was the recipient of some great pizzas and some of your Greek salad. So thank you. You're welcome. You know, we've all been hit hard, but when you turn around and, and roll up your sleeves and give back to the community, it goes a long way, and we appreciate it. It's been it's been great and we really appreciate all the support from the chamber and you know it's we're just happy to be here happy to help great well this has been fun i hope we get to you know keep doing some of these series it's really a great opportunity for you i hope you're having fun at home i'm going to check in and see how we're looking for our dessert segment we're looking good for the dessert segment all right let's go over Saving the saving the last here. We're just going to get started with uh, the wine segment here, and then we're going to go to the dessert. Perfect. So you know all this great food we've been having, and cocktails, and all this stuff. Um, that artichoke dip. If uh, you're diving into that, I promise it'll be even better with a little bit of passing time chardonnay. Um, I'm going to backtrack just a minute and I'll tell you a little bit about the passing time story and I'll take my mask off too. Thank you. I sound a little bit better and we got our nice social We've got our social distance. Too. But yeah, I was a, uh, a young, young, dumb rookie with the Miami Dolphins in the late nineties. And, um, my teammate, Dan Marino, uh, was a big wine guy, uh, Italian kid, grew up in Pittsburgh. His uncle Chucky made a homemade wine and, uh, Dan and his wife, Claire were, were so good to me and Julie. And they would have us over for the holidays. You know, I'm 3,000 miles away from home, really, for the first time. And uh, Dan had a buddy who was a distributor at Southern that actually turned him on to Washington Wines in the late 90s. Mm -hmm. And so Dan's like, Damon, you ever had any of this Leonetti, this uh, Andrew Will? You ever had any of this stuff, man? I'm like, no, Dan, I couldn't really afford it as a college kid. But, man, that stuff's good. Pour me some more. So the bug bit. And I just fell in love with wine. And Dan and I, our relationship obviously was about football. 
and it became about wine. And we always talked about one day when I was done and graduated and, and moved back home to Washington that we would start passing time. Mm -hmm. So fast forward, uh, you know, almost 20 years and here we are wow. with passing time. And, um, and you've got a tasting room. Where's your tasting room? Well, we're up in Woodville okay. and you know, we don't, we have an awesome space, but we're not like a t everyday open tasting room. We just mm -hmm. don't make enough wine. Okay. We only make about a couple thousand cases a year and we have just a loyal following. And I know so many awesome club members here in Piala. Thank you. Um, so, but, but, but we are open at times. So shoot me an email, bug us, <laughs> go to the website, passingtime.com okay. and, and we'll get you up to our tasting room. But, um, but yeah, so we always talk about, like I said, one day, let's, let's do this thing. And so 2012 was our first vintage um, where we just released the 2018. So here we are all these years later, having a blast with it. And maybe the coolest part of the story is um, my family's agricultural roots. Believe it or not, <laughs> my dad grew up over in Eastern Washington. I'm a Puyallup kid. We moved here when I was in third grade and all that good stuff. But my dad's roots are in Eastern Washington. Mm -hmm. uh, Nelson Heward, my great grandfather, farmed in the Prosser Valley into his 90s. Wow. We sourced some fruit today um, from about a mile away from where the family's farm was. There's a Heward Road there in Grandview. And so the Boucher Vineyard, we get some fruit from. He, he drives, Dick Boucher drives down Heward Road every day to get to his vineyard. So it's kind of cool. You know, I didn't really grow up in the agriculture and farm, but now mm -hmm. coming all these years later, coming back full, full circle. circle. Cool. Yeah, absolutely. So that's kind of a fun story too. Yeah. But uh, I can yak all day. We can drink some wine. <laughs> well, so we... let's drink some wine. Let's drink some wine. So um, Chardonnay, that's what I mentioned with the artichoke. Mm -hmm. dip, awesome stuff. Um, it's funny, as I'm getting older, I, I mentioned earlier with the cocktails and drinking vodka a little easier on my body. Uh, I find that white wine. You, it lasts a little longer. <laughs> <laughs> right? And that too is a little bit easier on my body. Yes. So, and, and we're doing more and more fun events. When the project started out, it was just wine or just one wine on Horse Seven Hills Cab. Mm -hmm. But now with, with dinner parties and fun mm -hmm. events like this, yep. you got to have a white wine. Got to have a white wine. And, and like I said, I'm drinking more and more of it in my old age. So uh, this Chardonnay, it's really an everyday simple Chardonnay. Um, if you notice the colors, this wine was actually designed to go to South Florida. Beautiful color. It was a wine that we made uh, to be served on premise in South Florida. We had a contract lined up with Southern and then the pandemic hit. Mm -hmm. And rest, the restaurant scene kind of, as we know, took mm -hmm. a little bit of a dive. So I was left with quite a bit of it here at home. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see around town if people like the Chardonnay. And it has been a huge hit. Great. I got a bug, a lot of the folks down here in, in Piala, because up north, I got it by the glass at El Gaucho, Como, Daniel. So Good. we, we got to get it here here in Piala. And, and I got some just some more of it, too. So We know some restaurant owners. We, yes, we do. Yes, we do. <laughs> um, and it's very reasonably priced. This is I want it to be an everyday on-premise by the glass pour. And so this wine is actually the first one we make off-site. It's not made at our winery in Woodenville. We make it over um, in Mattawa uh, oh. with the Milbrandt family. Uh, Kendall Mix is the winemaker for this. Okay. The fruit comes from three different vineyards up there, uh, Upland, Wynn, and Evergreen. Um, it's it's really cool. What's cool about this wine at the price point, I think you'll notice right away, is the way we fermented it. Like, it's a little bit different. So you'll feel the weight uh, of the wine on your palate. This is going to taste much more expensive than a $20, $25 bottle of wine because of the way the malolactic fermentation that it went through. Um, when I want a Chardonnay, I do want a little bit of that butter. Mm -hmm. You know, I want a little bit of that oak, but not too much. Mm -hmm. And I think this, this Chardonnay kind of just falls right in the middle of what you're looking for. So if you got this guy at home, twirl it around, you'll smell it on the nose, just classic Chardonnay, vanilla cream, you'll get that on the nose. But just again, the weight on your palate. Believe it or not, I spit. I've learned more in my old age too. I, I taste, I get more of the flavors uh, going down with my palate when I when I spit it back out. So sorry if you're offended by that. <laughs> and most of my friends say, I'll never understand that. I'm never going to spit. I want all of it. But um, for me, with I taste a lot of wine, especially in its infancy. When I when I do that technique, I taste everything. And and then what do you bottle this one for? Um, this is this is <laughs> this is communion at the end of the night. We all get to taste that. Nice. Um, but yeah, so just a great everyday Chardonnay. I think it just hits that sweet spot of what you're looking for with a Chardonnay, but not too over the top with too much vanilla, too much oak, which and too much sugar. A lot of these wineries, mm -hmm. believe it or not, they're adding residual sugar to their wines. Yeah. And if we took it to the lab, 
you would you wouldn't believe how much sugar is in some of these chardonnays mm. and i like mine dry and you yep. will find this one dry as well but um you know I, i've been told by a lot of these great winemakers you know as, as americans we grow up with a lot of sugar mm -hmm. lollipop soda pop all that stuff right and so then as we get older our our taste buds we, we still appreciate that sugar, but we, we don't notice it as much. So a lot of these guys put so much sugar in it. So you still get that fix that you had when you were younger, <laughs> just more. That's now. what it's all about. Bringing us right back. And yep. The yeah. memories. Yeah, Very so. nice. Well, I have a quick question. Yeah, so 2012, uh, um, yeah. for your first vintage yet so quickly, you've soared to scoring points as high as 92 and 94 with all of these bottles. So yeah, you, you're, you're on the charts. That's fan <laughs> <laughs> fantastic. I just think you've made your mark so quickly. Yeah, no, thanks, Tara. I appreciate that. Um, really, at the end of the day, it's all about the vineyards that you source the fruit from. Mm -hmm. And um, we are super fortunate because of my family's roots to source fruit from the, you know, the most uh, respected, established vineyards in the state of Washington. Mm -hmm. When we get to our red wines here, um, you know, we're able to source fruit from the Shampoo Vineyard, which is arguably the most famous cab site in the Horse Heaven Hills. Mm -hmm. Andrew Wills Sorella, Colceda Creek's 100 Point Wines, mm -hmm. Woodward Canyon's Old Vines, his most famous uh, Cabernet, all come from the Shampoo Vineyard. My dad played high school basketball against Paul Shampoo. <laughs> so I was pretty lucky from the get-go to be connected to him, and he introduced me to a lot of these great farmers over there in eastern Washington. Um, the Discovery Vineyard, which is just right down the road from, from, from Shampoo, uh, Milo and Kay May, just the neatest people in the world. Uh, we've been sourcing fruit from them from day one. Uh, Wallula, the benches, if you've heard of that, that's the other Horse Heaven Hills vineyard we source fruit from. Just an amazing place, maybe the most beautiful vineyard in the world. Has these steep benches going right down the Columbia River. Great. And super windy and hot as hell. <laughs> just beats up the grapes and the grapes, that, that's what you want. You want yep. these grapes to struggle. Mm -hmm. And that's when, the, you know, all the neat stuff comes out of the vine from them. Um, and then we make a Red Mountain Cab and a Walla Walla Cab as well. From Walla Walla, we get the fruit from Seven Hills and Pepper Bridge, a couple other iconic vineyards. Uh, my good friend Drew Bledsoe, even though he's a cook, uh, he grew up in Walla Walla. He's been good to me, helping connecting me to some awesome uh, farmers and vineyards over there. And then Red Mountain, we make a Cabernet from as well. Um, so really our story is Cabernet. Okay. And there's three Appalachians. And it's so fun when you open up these wines and it's the same varietals, mostly Cabernet, mm -hmm. same vintage, 2017, and they're so different. Mm -hmm. And to really celebrate the difference in place and the way we're making wine here in Washington State. So uh, it's been an awesome project. Um, it's a lot of fun, you know, working at a winery. But at the end of the day, like any other business, it's always about the relationships mm -hmm. and your club members and the restaurants and all the neat people and and everybody loves food and wine. Oh, we get to experience here tonight. It's a fun so, passion of mine. Yeah. What? Um, how active do you get in the fall harvest? Yes, so very active. Um, I do have a professional winemaker. I'm not going to stand up here and tell you that I was trained and went to school to be a winemaker. That's an art in and of itself. But all along the way, my winemaker, Chris Peterson, would tell you that I'm a pain mm -hmm. because I, I want to know everything. Mm -hmm. I want to be there all the blending trials. Okay. But during harvest, um, it's a lot of fun because I do, I try to get over to the vineyards. Oh, you know, two or three times during September into October is when we usually pick our fruit. Cabernet kind of can hang a long mm -hmm. time on the vine. Mm -hmm. Cab Franc Merlot as well. Um, so yeah, I, I love to get over there visit with the farmers, taste the fruit, make sure we pick it when it's just ripe. Some people want it a little uh, riper than, than, than normal. My winemaker, Chris Peterson, likes it when it's when it's just right. He thinks it's more fresh mm -hmm. and, and brings out some more interesting characteristics uh, with the final product. So that's a lot of fun. And then obviously crush at the winery when we haul all the all the fruit into Woodenville and we get the big machine out and we're sorting it out and, and all that fun stuff is a lot of fun. It's a lot of work, yep. but also a lot of fun. So, you know, we're up to about 2,000 cases, you know, sometimes up to 35 tons of, of fruit coming in on average uh, uh, any year. And so it, it is a lot of work, but uh, the most important part of, of the journey in making this wine is when you pick it and then just doing it right during fermentation and crush. Great. Well, you're certainly passionate about it. That shows um, the wines are exquisite. If you haven't had a chance to sample some, I certainly encourage you to do so. So you are still taking wine club members? Oh, yeah. Yeah, All we right. definitely have room for some wine club members. Um, 
you know, uh, we also throw awesome parties. Yeah, I was thinking a chamber event, event, a little after hours chamber event when it's a little more permissible. It <laughs> certainly better be on the calendar. Yeah, for sure. Um, obviously, at this time, it's a little bit different. Yep. Um, our big spring release weekend is a lot of fun. We usually have six, 700 people up there. Dan Marino comes to town. It's an awesome party. Um, but obviously, during this time, it's been a little, different. A little different. We'll get back to those days. Yeah. Um, we also do a Monday night Merlot event. We always get a Seahawk game, Monday night football, everybody up the pizza truck, the winery. And then we always do a holiday open house. Okay. So, um, yeah, our club members will tell you that I think we throw the three best party weekends uh, of the year. We don't throw a lot of them, but when we do, we do it right. So yeah. that'd be a great reason to join our club. And, and the other thing with our club, I think so many wine clubs, it's like, oh, I get four bottles every month and then you get stuff you don't want. Mm -hmm. Ours is not even like that. It's either three bottles a year, six bottles a year, or a case a year okay. of our Cabernet. So you get to pick. And then throughout the year, we do offer our small batch offerings. And if you want them, great. If you don't, you don't. Like I said, our Chardonnay, our red blend, we always release around the holidays, and a Merlot. So it's really pretty simple, but Passing Time is a Cabernet story. Our club is really simple. We'd love to have you on board, PassingTime.com. Yeah, well, I promised my husband no more wine clubs, but sorry, babe, <laughs> one more, just one more. <laughs> just one more. So are we ready for our dessert segment? Saved the best sweets for last here. I am super excited that we have a great friend, Odette Daniello. I think, uh, Damon, you're gonna go ahead and introduce her and tell us a little bit about Odette, but um, Celebrity Cake Studio, many of you already know um, their creations. They're phenomenal. It's And what she's created with uh, Celebrity Cake Studio is quite an empire in itself. So let's hear yeah. a little bit more about Odette. Yeah, owner Odette Daniello is a third generation bakery owner who grew up in the industry and continues to love the craft of baking and cake decorating. She works with an amazing team of bakers, event planners, and cake designers committed to making your special occasions memorable with beautiful Sweetheart. and delicious desserts. Celebrity Cake Studio adds a family dynamic to everything they do. They love to see their staff smiling, and they encourage a spirited work environment by celebrating all of their birthdays, employees' birthdays, sharing the family-style meals once a week, and paying attention to a work-life balance in a bakery. Odette grew up joking that instead of a silver spoon, she was born with a silver spatula in her. Her extensive <laughs> I love experience, that. expertise, and passion for the craft of cake decorating led her to open her first retail Two bakery in 1999 in Lacey. In 2004, the family there. purchased and the Cake no Studio, Tacoma's to premier cake and boutique. The, the two okay. stores soon consolidated to, to become okay. Celebrity Cake Studio, okay. and for 20 years, have helped to make their clients celebrate the milestones of their lives. Odette, there she is. I guess. Oh, yeah, fist bump. There we go. Elbow bump. Where's the camera? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. So, my name is Odette. And if you don't know me, I own a store in, by the Tacoma Dome. It's purple, hence my outfit. And it's Celebrity Cake Studio. And today, we sold, along with this, the meal kit, to get an option to buy a cupcake kit. And we, we started cake decorating our, our um, cake decorating classes like maybe four years ago at our store. We used to do it in house. Um, can I have a platter? Please? Absolutely. Um, sorry about that. <laughs> um, but now we do it virtually. So we offer it every month. We don't do it in the summer because normally we're super busy, but um, we've revised it and we did one for Halloween. We'll be doing one in December. Um, and the kits come like this. You can buy it on our website. But for, the, for this particular event, we created um, a four pack, two vanilla and two chocolate and one for Drew. I mean, Damon. Damon. <laughs> I was like, Damon. Drew? Drew. I, I, sometimes I'm Rock's brother, but Drew is Brock, a Cougar. that's right. So if you're sorry. Me, I'm so Drew, sorry. It's okay. You know why it's okay? Because you're wearing purple. Yeah. Yes. Hello, yes. Yes. I am so you're sorry. I try to know football, but I don't. Hey, that would be my husband. It's all good. I'm all news anyway. <laughs> so you're going to take a, you're going to take your icing bag, cut it with a pair of scissors, we created this design so you don't have to have any other um, tools, right? So you're gonna take your icing 
and you basically, I've done this before, and I know that people want to see it close up. So I'm just going to make circles and swirl it just like that. And I'm going to do all four of it. Can you put a little more on mine? Sure, I will. <laughs> well, there's a lot of icing, so you could do layers and layers. <laughs> You can have all four of these. You are a seasoned pro. You make that look so easy. I actually learned it when I was 10 years old. Somebody here was like, are you, do you know what you're going to do? I'm like, since I was 10. Yeah, it's hard with the spatula at home. Yes, it is. While you're swirling, I'm kind of excited about this new Harry and David. Oh, yeah. So along with our retail store, we actually have a brand that we um, own called Dragonfly Cakes. And we make these tea cakes right here. Um, that we ship around the country and part of um, for this holiday and here on after you'll be able to buy our products from Harry and David so fancy Congratulations. from Pierce County that's a big deal <laughs> and so anyway so now we have and I guess I'll, you can finish off every the rest of do you mind handing me my gloves Absolutely. if you don't mind we had sloppy joes earlier, so if I make a mess of myself eating a cupcake, it's okay. Sure. Hey, caramba. Ooh, a napkin, please. A napkin? You got any napkins? I just... Be careful when you're decorating and you're wearing a chef's coat. You're supposed to fold it, which I didn't. <laughs> All righty, buddy. So, super easy. Put on your gloves. Take some of your sprinkles. And you're gonna sprinkle to the side. Actually, it's a little hard to do it that way. So I'm gonna pour it out. That's a secret. I always yeah. put it over the floor when I'm making cupcakes. Right. And you shake it on top. Okay, I got You it. actually pick it up, right? And you pour it on a plate and you just kind of What age did you start doing this? Ten. Ten. So I was a child laborer, and that is no joke. <laughs> <laughs> That's how um, we got to the U.S. Actually, oh, yeah. I moved to Guam from the Philippines when I was young, and my family worked my aunt's bakery, and I was a cake decorator there. So cool. But I loved it. It yeah. was so fun. So yeah, I can decorate with my eyes closed. And this is before cake decorating was even cool. Right. <laughs> Actually, it started to be cool in 2000, and everybody started realizing, oh, wow, I can become a cake decorator. Well, it's got its own TV show. Right? Yeah, that cake it's when, or... yeah, absolutely. It's doing great with um, some cooking, uh, wait, cake decorating classes. They sell out every time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We do. Really register oh, for awesome. You can't. You can't register for them anymore. Well, you can now. You can now. It's virtual. But wow. the live ones, it, people just. Um, would sign up right after um, doing the class. So then it just books up. We only could do 24 people at a time because our store is fairly small. Um, so it should look like this. Beautiful. So the, the designs are, you, we made these like, we pre-made these because it's it was easier. So this is a maple leaf. This is made out of rolled fondant. Rolled fondant is like, sugar clay <laughs> with white chocolate and um and we molded it hmm. okay I, i'll tell you the hint of how i molded this i i actually took um like a fake leaf and i took the vein out and that's what we used to mold it wow it's beautiful super, Authentic. super secret so then you put it on top and this is just a football for damon oh, thank you andrew <laughs> and Brock. And Brock. Brock. Yeah, there we go. I love it. You, your brother is a is a as on the radio. Yeah, he actually did the Seahawks game today on Fox, NFL Fox. He so was the color analyst. My husband is such a big fan and yeah. was like, "What? Are oh, you can be on like Zoom with his brother?" Me yeah, tell me I you know. do cool things, I and I was like, I don't know. I'm like, what are you talking about? And I said, I don't know. Cupcakes. Cupcakes. <laughs> like, I don't know nothing. I was like, how come you get to do it? I'm like, because I'm 
I'm oh, cool. Because <laughs> he was actually going to come here. Okay. So he could talk to you and I could just decorate. Yeah. Yeah. I have some stories about Brock. <laughs> I got to tell him that. So here it is. I took, um, we have these three pieces of fondant in here. There was an orange one. So we're going to do the pumpkin. So I just split it in half. Like you can do one big pumpkin, one little pumpkin. So that's what I'm going to do. It's like a mama and a baby. And you make it into a big ball. Two balls. Whoops. And then you squish it a little bit. Squish. Kids are so good with this because they just know exactly what to do. Plus, it's just like Play-Doh, but edible. So now you have this. And the way you make the pumpkin dent, you take the pair of scissors and you go from the top to the bottom. Magic. What? Movie magic. Here it is. There it is. No CG necessary. Wow. Do it with both little pieces. Doop, 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 doop. Doop. And the acorn. Ta-da! So actually you can make, an, this is how you make an acorn. So you'll take the brown fondant and you kind of make it into a, I don't know what the shape is. Like, like a football. Kind of. Tom Brady <laughs> deflated football. Right. <laughs> that oh my, oh my gosh we made they cookies deflated, we we made cookies that were deflated and sold so many of them deflated cookies deflated cookies mm -hmm. wow. there you go. yeah did you patent them no mm -hmm. i don't think that's patentable but i thought it was hilarious the guys in our bakery are just like football fanatics mm -hmm. i was actually listening to the game today i was like what is this but you get they lost they today. Did. Ten it points happens. apparently. Yeah. Bills are pretty good. Yep. Exactly what my husband said. They're good. <laughs> Our defense is in trouble though. They need some help. Oh no, really? Yeah. What happened? Well, you pay <laughs> the quarterback thirty eight million dollars a year and there's not much left in the salary cap. Oh shoot. <laughs> but it's what one else are you gonna do? I'd, I'd pay for him too. He's the best in the league. Yeah, plus he has yeah. it seems like he has a really good attitude. Yeah. Russell, Russell. Okay, so you see that? I took the brown fondant and I made it into a, like a little hat. It's like it looks yeah. like a guy. Got an acorn there. There's an acorn. That's I love cool. it. Yep. And so you need to make like little dents on the acorn so that it's like crisscrossy, like a real acorn, you know? Mm -hmm. Did you know you can actually collect acorn and like make acorn jelly and make acorn stuff with it? Hmm. Mm -hmm. Did not know that. Do acorns grow in, the, in, in Washington State? Yeah. Yeah. They fall all over the place. You've got quite the... So you kind of crisscross it so it looks like a real acorn. I don't know if you guys see that. It does. Yep. Right? Right. And then you squish it some more. Look how fast this is. You see? It's yep. fast. It's because we did it all for you. And just in time for Thanksgiving. Right. You can impress your relatives. Right. You say, I'm going to make acorn cupcakes. Ta-da. Boink. Look at that. And then you just have to put little stems. So you take the dark brown and you make little, see that? Tiny like that for the spaghetti. Yeah, because you need a little stem, yeah? Stems. Can't leave that out. <laughs> you can't. How are you gonna pick up a pumpkin otherwise? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I went to your winery, by the way. You did win. Because um, I'm an EO, entrepreneur organization. Oh yeah, cool, that yeah. was a fun night. I was the, um, I was awesome. the co-learning chair and I, I was there when you were. I love it, oh, thank It you. was so fun. Thank you. 
and we really enjoyed your wine. No, thank you. Wine and cupcakes, right? It's the great Did pairing. So, Odette, we have a question here oh, yes, from the home. Where can yep. you buy the pendant? Is that what it's saying right here? Oh, right, right there. Oh, the fondant? The fondant. Um, you can buy fondant in like Michael's. You can buy fondant in Joanne's, but that fondant, we make our own fondant. Um, you might want to call us because we might be able to sell you like a tub because our fondant is fresh. We don't, we make it like all the time. Um, and a lot of the stores that use fondant, they buy it. So it kind of smells like plastic. Ours is, has no preservatives or anything like that. It's super simple ingredients, but, um, and so it's super clean. Um, and that's why people don't like fondant mostly because they they um, use fondant and use too thick of a layer. Canned fondant smells like plastic, so it's like eating plastic. So people are always like, "I hate fondant." <laughs> Not my fondant. Not it took fondant. it took me two years to develop that recipe. Two years. You hear me? Patience has its, it's virtue. good. So yeah. That you, you bake a lot. You decorate a lot. What has been some of your most challenging projects that you've been? <sighs> challenging? Oh, um, we replicated Overlake Hospital. Oh, there you go. <laughs> and it was like this gigantic cake. It was like two doors. Right? Good Sam. I should replicate I Good Sam. All here. the buildings. <laughs> wow. My best friend I actually mean... works at Good Sam. I, I'll just replicate the OB wing, that is, oh. the labor and delivery. Nice. Right. And uh, Celebrity Cake Studio, a bit of a family affair? Yes. Also. My sister is my, my, um, my sister is my, um, hi, Sean. <laughs> Sean, who owns Meridian Cafe, is my good friend. So you have to come here and eat here. Oh, yeah. um, my sister is my partner. Mm -hmm. And my husband, my cousin, um, both my kids work there. And a lot of the people who work there, I've known since they were, yep. because I'm the oldest one. But um, yeah, it's, it is a family effort. Moist cupcakes like yours, like some of them dry out. It drives me nuts. You know, um, like just, you're, you're just the cake is just so perfect. Like a lot of, you have to put fat for sure. Okay, so and the way you bake it, butter. butter, butter, no butter. Um, and you also have to, so when you bake it, yeah. um, you have to like gradually cool it. You take it out of the oven, you cool it room temperature, you refrigerate it okay. and then you freeze it. Wow. Like, so some people like, um, like if you go the cupcakes that you buy, they either like take it out of the oven, let it sit all day. So there's like a layer, like you have to like bring it down to whatever temperature it is. It has to like gradually go. Gotcha. Love it. Any other questions? Can I eat? Yes, please. <laughs> I wash my hands. We also have um, a professional cupcake um, eater there in the audience today. Oh. Hi, sweetie. Come on over, Sawyer. <laughs> She's my bun twin. Come here. Yeah, we got bun twins. This is um, Sawyer, my granddaughter. Who Hi, got Sawyer. She had fun today decorating these cupcakes, didn't you, out at Cockerel Cider? It was a lot of fun, and she loved it. Hers was beautiful. What do you think about Odette? She did a pretty great job, too, didn't she? You sure did. Which one do you want, sweetheart? Which one do you want to try? You can't have the football one. Oh, I'm just that kidding. That would be for <laughs> Damon. Which one do you Here, want, honey. Sawyer? <laughs> you want the pumpkin one. Here, you can play with that. All right. Yeah. She's so cute. Here you go, Sawyer. All right. So Perfect. And that would be for you, <laughs> Damon. Oh. And... That's all we have left. Yeah, cheers to you so, at home, everyone. Go well, ahead and dive thank, in. You thank you so you. much. Oh, thank, you. Yeah, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I, thank you for coming. I think we're going to um, call in Mikey and Monica. And we've got Chef Brian. And if you can find Sean Broback somewhere, we're going to have a sip of wine. That's a good together cupcake. Together at the very end. Oh, yeah. Give these guys thank you, cupcake. everybody. Dave, I'm telling Coach about that cupcake. <laughs> <laughs> Very no coaching is going to be anymore, trust me. Buddy! To this great <laughs> event. We're so excited you uh, joined us. How lucky are we to have this talent in our own backyard here? Um, I can't wait to have a little wine. Correct. Uh, cat farm. Okay, we're going to have a cupcake. Is it really good? Fantastic.
Oh, sorry. Oh, we need one more. One more class. Come yeah, on, here we go. go. Let's go. I don't drink. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh my gosh. That that. Just <laughs> oh, that <was> tough. <laughs> as long as you're okay, honey, you're that's okay. all that matters. Awesome face -face that's how we party with y'all. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> right? Here we go. Fill it up. Yeah, a little more room for me in there. I heard right. it's really yummy. Cheers, everyone. Right? Thank Cheers. You so Thank you so much. For what a fun day. Me. Damon, you're awesome. Sarah, you're awesome. Thank oh, you. Mikey, Ryan, 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 John, again. Love you guys. Hey, bring it back. Ellen, you're a goddess. Thank you all. You're a goddess of the virtual world. We thank you so much. John Kelly and your team, you guys are awesome. Thanks so much.